Good afternoon guys, it is late Saturday afternoon and I normally wouldn't be doing anything in the workshop this time of the day but I've had a busy day, I've been out most of the day. I've been to a guitar auction Whitcomb Warehouse, um, had a look around there, been shown around, been shown some very very rare vintage guitars upwards of £20,000, I'm not going to tell you where it is. But uh, there's an option that I may be doing some work in this place, I'm not going to mention anything right now but uh, looks very very good I think we're quite impressed with my knowledge of guitars um, and I think I'll leave it right there for now but we have a new guitar in today I say new it's about four years old it's got a 2014 stamp on the back and I'll show you so you now know it's a Fender USA now but it's got a black Fender logo now I always understood that black Fender logos were made in Mexico but this isn't so this is I wouldn't say it's a budget range, but it is a it's a Fender Strat Special. And the Strat Specials, I know it's a special because it says on the back there, the Strat Specials, this is a HSS type. The Specials are the cheaper version of the American Stratocasters and they retail at about £800. Now this is a 2014 model, so it's not brand new, but it is in good condition. But it's come in and the owner just says, do whatever needs doing, it needs a setup, but anything else needs doing, just do it and let me know what it's going to cost. Well, for starters, look at the tremolo. It's it's lifting up there, so that's not set right. So we'll get that set right. But one area of concern for me, I put my thumb across the frets, and these frets are quite a bit high frets, but they're quite flat across the top. So straight away, when my friend Derek Boyce, and it's not Derek's guitar, it's one of his clients' guitar. Derek is a guitar tutor, Derek Crane. Uh, from Nottingham there and um, he bought it in for a lad called Dale but when I picked it up I said to Derry the frets are a bit flat they're a bit high I says but we're a bit flat I says they need uh, re-crowning reprofiling so I'm going to get the strings off and see what needs doing see if there are any high frets I've been across with fret rocker with the neck it was a bit of relief in there it's not straight yet and I didn't see anything on toward there's no major rocking on any of the frets here but once I get the strings off I get more of an idea I'm not concerned that the frets are high at all but I am a little bit concerned that they're quite flat across the top but I'm going to get the strings off have a, have a proper look I've had it plugged in it plays okay sounds okay uh, all the electrics are fine I didn't notice any crackling or buzzing or anything I think on the electrics and uh, you know maybe these got a flatter profile neck than the you know the, the deluxes and the more um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the slightly better, the better American models, like the standards, for instance. These put me in mind of a Mexican. They put me also in mind of something like a uh, maybe you know the Chinese series of, uh, of uh, Fender guitars. What are they called? The Player, the Player series. I don't like them guitars. They look cheap, feel cheap. They've got a thin piece of rosewood across the top. Looks a bit like. Uh, more like a veneer than a rosewood fingerboard. Don't like them uh, player series ones from China. Myself, we might have one. I refretted one a couple of years ago, and it, it came out all right, and it was all right. But no, I'm a bit of a snob now. I'm not. A, I'm not a gear snob. I just like quality instruments, and I'm not saying I'm not slagging this off. It is a nice guitar. It's decent weight. It's nice enough neck. Sounds okay. Um, so let's not knock it, it is a USA Fender, so that is a good thing. But uh, really, I can't decide. I already noticed that the nut slots aren't cut deep enough, so the strings are a bit high above the first fret. Action at the 12th fret on this looks pretty low, looks to be about 1.6 millimeters on the low E. Probably a little bit too low on the high E, looks to be about one, just over one millimeter. But I'll check all this out, I'll sort the radius out on the saddles, it actually looks pretty okay. So the main area concerning, we need to get this bridge sorted out. Get the spring sorted out at the back and get that a um, bit more to the body with just enough tension to hold it back and keep it in tune. It means the tremolo can still be used, uh, but we can tune it up without any um, any hassle, without it bringing the bridge forward. That's what we want. It's a nice enough looking guitar. There are some indentations all across the top of a fingerboard here. It looks like, I don't know what it looks like. don't even know if you can see it. You'll get more of an idea when I've got the strings off. So we'll, uh, we're just going to hold it there for now. And the area I'm concerned at is here. It's like all ripples all down this edge on the top of a fingerboard. And you, I can feel it with my fingernail. You know, it's scraping. So it's not perfectly smooth. I don't know what's happened there. I'll get that sorted out. But that's it. I'm going to get the strings off. 
and um, we'll see where we are with these fracks. They may be all right, maybe just, you know, we'll just see. But anyway, I'll get the strings off, we'll go across with fret rocker, we'll get the next straight, go across with fret rocker, and we'll see exactly where we are. If it's just that we need a setup, that'll make the job a lot easier for me because it'll be two hours less than doing a fret level, won't it? You know, you know what I'm saying? But we'll see where we are, and I'll come back and let you know soon. So, good news regarding the frets, they don't need to be profiling, they are just tall frets. They're not uh, particularly flat, they just feel a little bit flat because they're high, I think. Uh, but there are two high frets, which I'm going to have to sort out. Um, that was just on a quick uh, check. I'm not check. There's a little bit of a rock on that one. So there are probably three high frets total. Which I'm going to sort out. I've done a special rate on this one because I'm not charging for an intensive setup. I've knocked him a little bit of money off because it doesn't need a lot of fret work. But the electrics do need slightly looking at. Now because this is a, a HSS, the strat is normally wired. You have a tone on the neck and a tone on the middle. Um, and you don't have a tone for the bridge. But there is a way to wire it so you can get the bridge tone on the middle tone pot. And you, all you got to do is solder an extra wire and use it as a jumper. But it looks like what's been done here is that there's no tone on the middle pot. Or on the middle pickup, should I say. At all. There's tone on the bridge, which is that one. And there's tone on the neck, which is this one. But no tone on the middle. Uh, middle, sorry, here. Middle and tone I normally put on the same tone knob. So I think a wire's been caught and that's been added to the tone and that's been taken off. I'm going to rewire. I'm going to make sure this middle pickup uses that tone button with... The bridge. Also, in position two, and it's a common way of wiring it, position two it splits the humbucker. So you've only got one coil, and instead of just having the full bridge in the full middle, you've just got one coil in the middle. Then in position three, normal middle pickup, in position four, middle and neck, and in five, just neck. So I'm going to also alter, I'm going to keep that as a split on position two, that is in humbucker mode on position one only. But I'm going to add the tone. Uh, to the bridge tone, so when you know, well, anyway, you can use the tone neck on its own or bridge and middle together. So I'm going to alter that slightly. I'm quite happy with the frets. Uh, what else needs doing? The tremolo needs setting up. I'm not going to charge for a tremolo, I normally charge £10 extra for a tremolo, but there is six point. Uh, I don't even like the tremolos, but there is a six point screw version, they're not difficult to set up, so there's no extra charge for that. So I do a special rate. Um, like I say, frets, very, very good frets. They are a medium jumbo size. They are very tall frets. I would say they're about 1.3, maybe even 1.4 millimeters high. And they are in really fine fettel. Much better than I thought with the strings on. So I'm quite happy with that. One bugbear, the back plate, the string holes are behind the plate. We shouldn't be. This hole is designed so you can get the strings right out without removing the back plate. And I can't on this, I've got to remove the back plate. You do it line up, look, the strings are there. Right down here, and it's all underneath, you can't get them out. So that's a pain, I've got to remove the back plate, but I'd have to remove it anyway to set the tremolo, or set the springs, so, uh, no big deal, just a bugbear. So, I'm gonna to recommend to the owner of this guitar that it needs a semi-intensive setup, it needs a little bit of fret work. I'll do them a special rate. The pickups aren't quite right level either. I do quite, these are staggered pickups on the middle and neck. I quite like the staggered ones, whether it actually in a radius. It, it would, I would say it's kind of, it is a vintage style as well, a vintage stagger. But anyway, we're going to clear all the dust off. Uh, we're going to get that work done. It's not a great, it's a couple of hours in this. You know, a good couple of hours. Um, but I'm going to enjoy doing it. I'm also going to recut the nut slots. They need to go a little bit lower. So it's going to have an intensive setup, a little bit of electrical work, a little bit of fret work. Um, it'll be a nice fun on this one. And it looks fantastic, doesn't it? All black. Looks really, really nice. Is it um, Jeff Beck has an all black one? Anyway, whoever, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to let me only know what I intend to do on the guitar, how much it's going to cost, and I will get back onto this one on Monday. So from this moment forward, it's Saturday afternoon, it was round about 5.15pm Saturday afternoon. I'm finished for the day, in fact I'm finished for the weekend. I'll be back early Monday morning. We'll get this one on the bench and we'll get it done. Be sure to come back now. So good morning for our friends. I've been doing a little bit of digging on this guitar and um, it has a different kind of uh, tone system. It's what you call a grease bucket tone uh, mod. 
And um, all I noticed was when I was playing it, there was no tone on the middle pickup, but there was on the bridge pickup. And for a strat, that's quite odd because normally you don't have any tone on the bridge pickup, but you do on the middle and neck. Now, I do actually modify my end strats, it's what you call the Delta Blues Tone Mod, and you add the bridge pickup into the circuit. So I went and did a bit of digging, and it's this grease bucket tone modification. And what I'm supposed to do is when you um, drop down the volume or, or you roll down the tone, I don't know how it works, but you're supposed to not. It's not supposed to not add bass. Well, it, rolling down a tone doesn't add bass anyway. It doesn't add anything because rolling down tone switches just takes stuff away. And normally rolling down a tone just takes off the treble frequencies. So I don't know what that's all about. All I know is I'm going to look at a demo and a review on this guitar, and it sounds fantastic. And it's the way it is supposed to be wired. So I'm leaving it. I was going to add the middle pickup into the tone circuit, but I'm going to leave it as it is stock, or basically how it should be. Um, very interesting wiring uh, under there with nice big round uh, ceramic capacitors, they're like pennies they are. But I've just put the scratch plate and everything back together, I'm going to leave it as is. So all I'm going to do today is, I've got to check the frets again where four frets need attention, so it will, I'll be charging for an intensive setup on this. I'm going to set the bridge, I need to tighten the springs, I'm going to recut the nut because the slots are, are not quite deep enough, and I'm going to work now on these four frets, and all I'm going to do is, and I would say, this has got to be a 2014 model bar, but it says US14 on the serial number. So would that, would I right? I'm thinking that's a 2014 model. So it's not brand new. Nice guitar. I think you can pick these up for just under £800, which is not expensive. The only thing I don't like about them is, and this is how you can tell it from a, a standard, is it has a black Fender logo, which denotes that it is a slightly cheaper model. And um, if you're going to do a cheaper model, just keep it the same spec as your ones. I do like the fact it's got a large headstock on there, that's nice, like the 1970, late 70s ones. Is it just specific to 1977? I'm not sure, but it is a lovely guitar. I don't like the six point tremolo. Strats I buy in the future will not have a six point tremolo, we'll have the two point fulcrum balance or floating tremolo on them. It's why I've not bought one of these, and it's, it's why I'm glad I've not bought one of these. End of the day, really, really nice guitar. So I've got four frets to level. I've got to do that as well. I'm not going to film that. Um, you know how it works. I'll go and get some fretting files out. I'll show you what's what. And the chances are I've also got just the one file. But I'm going to go with. I'm going to use my three point or three edge file just to remove the t the material from the top. This file has ground flat edges, so when we're working across the wood, we're not going to dig into the wood or the fingerboard. And um, when we're crowning the fret, because what it is, if I level the fret or take some material off it, it's going to go flat and I need to recrown it again. And this three point file enables me to do that, and I can angle it which way I want it to to build up that crown. I will gradually build it up, build it up, build it up. Once that's done, I will remove any burrs. Or anything with my profiling file. I've got a two and a half mil edge here and a two mil edge there. It's actually near a three mil and two and a half. I will use a two and a half mil edge, and what we'll do is once we crown the frets, any burrs we still have on there, I'll use I'll remove by using this file. Really simple method, very effective, great file. This one. Uh, I could use this just to crown the files regardless anyway, but because I've been doing this so long, I've always used a three edge file and I, I, I can feel a fret. So I'm going to use this one for leveling and just re-crowning, but I'm going to crack on with that, there are four to do, uh, one at uh, this fret 21, I've got a little bit of a high spot, and there are three down at the neck, end, or down at the headstock end, we've got fret three, fret five, and fret six, in fact I've got them marked out, you can have a look, you probably just see it there, fret three in the middle, five on the near side, and six in the middle, and we've got fret 21 on the near side there, so that shouldn't take me too long, and once that's done, we're going to get some mineral oil on the fingerboard. It does two jobs. It cleans, it penetrates into the wood, which it nourishes the wood. And it also floats up any crap or grime on there, which will wipe off. We'll give two coats. So it's going to one coat, get the grime off, another coat for it to soak in. Once that's done, once the frets are done, we can get the strings back on, or a new set of strings on there. We'll recut the nut slots, we'll set the bridge, uh, we'll set the radius on the saddles, and... Uh, once it's tuned in, it will be good to go. A couple of hours working this, so I'm going to crack on. It's, uh, I don't know what time it is right now. Um, it's 
8.40 in the morning. I said actually 8.38, so a couple of hours on this, I've brought it to about, get it to about 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, I've got a refret to do, and uh, I would like to get a refret done today, so we're looking at uh, a couple of three hours on it on a, on a guitar later. So I'll get this done, uh, I'll come back and show you the results. Uh, nice little project, nice easy one to start the week. Um, and I must admit, by the way, I've plugged this in, I've played it, it does sound fantastic. Out of the box, it's a really good sounding guitar, so don't let anything else detract you from that. It's all about, you know where I'm like, a fret friend. It's all about the neck and the frets. Once the neck and the frets are set right, you, 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 any guitar in the world, if the neck's right, the guitar can be amazing. If the neck's not right, the guitar will never be right. But anyway, the neck is right on this. The truss rod works. The frets are fine, in really good order. What a little bit of adjustment on four of the frets. That is not out of the ordinary. Now you'd probably get away with playing it as is if you had the action a little bit higher, but I'm all about a straight neck and level frets. So I'm gonna crack on with that. Check back soon. Okay, so being as I only have four frets to do, I thought I might as well just show you how we go on. And I've already done two, and it is not a difficult job at all. But let's just uh, show that we do have high frets. This is a great file because it's such a smooth cut. It's around about a number three cut, and it's something I can use. I don't normally use it, I don't always use it for leveling. I've got an actually even smoother one than this, a number four cut, which I normally use for leveling, but I can use this. It's a jack of all trades um, file, but it's not a jack of all trades master of none, it's a jack of jack of all trades and master of all. It's just a really, really good all-round file. But anyway, back to the case in point. Fret free. And you can hear it there. We always check three frets at a time. We have four different lengths on this, and it's milled flat, laser cut, perfectly level. And we always check three frets because that way, if one's high, we'll get a rock in the middle, like so. And when I move further up the neck, I use a shorter one, like this one here. So we know that that one fret is high compared to the other two around it. They're fine, they're fine, but this one's high. Now this one is only high on the edge, so what I'm going to do is, take the file, always clean the file, otherwise you're going to cause scratches, and all I'm going to do is just over where it's, I know it's high, and I'm just going to gently follow the arc, or what I presume the arc to be, what I think, I mean, this comes from experience, I pretty much know how it needs to feel, and there you go, that's only three, three strokes, it's still Tiny bit high in that one area. Again, wipe the file. Uh, even eyeballing it from here, I can see where it's high. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good to me. Feels pretty good. So let's. And there you go. That fret is now level with the rows around it, and we'll check, we'll go back one. Now this one's a little bit high. And that one's fine. Normally happens if I remove material from this, it's going to affect the two next to it. Now on this side it hasn't, but on this side it has ever so slightly. So we're going to remove just a little bit from this fret next to it. So now you see we've gone from doing four frets to five already. This is why once we get round about four or five frets, I, I just say look, we're going to have to do the lot. Because if you're doing, say you do seven, it could affect seven more around it. There's no point on that, you'll end up just wasting your time, every time you do one you've got to do another, so you just do the lot in one fell swoop. It makes the job a lot more difficult, a lot more long-winded, takes a lot longer. But there you go, that's it. So that fret is now level with the two around it, and this fret I've just altered, that is now level with these two around it. So these frets are now level here. Now what I need to do is I need to put this, get this uh, crown back in. What I'll do first is I'll take this file again, cleaning always. And I'm going to build up the area. And now, when I'm on the far side of the fret at the moment, so to build up the outside or the far side from you, we need to angle the file toward the camera in small increments. I'll be going more or less like this and bringing it over, bringing it over, bringing it over, just to rebuild that crown. And I'll do the same again from the other side. I'll put I'll move the file away from you, and that'll be cutting into. And what we're going to do is we're going to gradually rebuild up that gradient each side. Really, really, it's a lot easier. Uh, to do than it is to explain, but anyway, here we go, and I'm more or less vertical, I'm just going to start rolling toward the camera now, 
I can just a few strokes, it shouldn't take too many, and then I go to the other side, and this side I'm going to roll away from the camera, and that's it, and I've built up both sides of that arc, and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the profiling file, clean up, and we're just going to remove any burrs and smooth it off, and that one is done. We're going to need to polish this soon. The good thing about this as well, we can also just round off those right at the edge, so we've got that nice semicircular D shape, or semicircular shape. It doesn't have to be called a D shape, does it? So that one is done, and we're going to check again. Check each side, and that's beautiful. So that one's done. Just check this one again. That's good. I've removed that little material from that one there. I would have just thought, just with profiling, well, we can just... And that should be done, and that's beautiful again. And that's fine, that's great. So we've got one more to do, this one. This is high in the middle. And I mark up every part of this fret where it's high from start to finish. So okay there, it starts there. So we need to just get the pen, just bring it back a couple of millimetres. And this is basically showing exactly where I need to cut. One second. I just turn the camera off for a second. I've got someone just come to the door, uh, a client for my wife. So anyway, let's um, get on to this last one. Like I said, we're right here where it starts. We're going to find out where it ends. We've got that marked up right. So we have a good, that's an inch there, from start to finish. That's just about, it's just about exactly an inch. So again, just scoot across the top with the file. Don't go mad, you know. We can, removing too little is better than removing too much. Beautiful. And that's it with it. And I'm, I'm not pressing down on this, it's really, really light there. Tiny little rock just there, but everywhere else is fine. So again, nice and smooth. And I think we'll find that that it feels just right to me. So let's check again, nice and light. And that is beautiful. We check one back, and one forward, and that is it. So we have all the frets now level. All we need to do with this one now is build up that crown again. Very easy to do. Obviously I say very easy. I'm one of these people, when it came, I've been blessed in so many ways, but I've always been blessed that if I put my mind to anything and my hands to anything, I've always done, made a good job of it. And this came to me, working on guitars completely naturally. I've had no training. I always have self-taught, you know, I'm Christian. Uh, they're all gifts from the Lord. But yeah, I believe I use them to good effect. I've never found anything like this, uh, working on guitars, difficult in any way, shape or form. I've had to learn things, don't get me wrong. But once I've done it once, I've got it in, and that's it. So, brilliant, so praise the Lord for that. Here we go, just now, removing those burrs. It is a bit scratched up, we need to, we need to get some fine uh, grade sandpaper on this, just to remove those scratches. But let's check where we are. And there you go, that's absolutely fantastic. I do apologize for the noises coming from the other room. I normally shut two doors between us, I normally shut both. But there you go, anyway, here we are. And that is fantastic. So that is the frets, and it, oh, that was a little bit high. This is one I did earlier, scooter for just. Sometimes you see, you need to settle just for a moment or two, but anyway. That is it, so that is the frets done. I can more or less guarantee that's right. Feels great, and there you go, that is the frets all done. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spray the fingerboard with some mineral oil, like so. I'm gonna let that soak in, I'm gonna rub that in, let it soak 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna wipe that off. Well, I'll leave this 10 minutes or so. I'll wipe that off, get all the dirt off there, then I'm gonna pour a little bit more, I'll give it another small coat and I get the frets polished, then we can start getting the guitar set up.
Very good. I'm now going to show you something that you don't normally get to see. And I've got a piece of clean, well it's kitchen towel really. And I'm going to wipe the frets clean now the oil has soaked in for a little while. And we're just going to wipe off the excess. And I'm going to do, that's between one, I've done three small areas there. And there you go. You've seen that, you've just seen me do that, three small areas. Let's go to this side. There we go, between frets. 20, 22 fret, between 20 and 19, 19 and 18, 18 and 17, three frets again, and there you go, so you see all this, this is off your fingers, now there may have been some stain in this, I don't know, but that's all the crap also off your fingers, the sweat, the grime, it all builds up. And I recommend that this, what I'm doing now, basically what I've sprayed this with was mineral oil. In the trade it's called lemon oil, it's not lemon oil. Lemon oil would rip your wood to pieces. Uh, it's mineral oil which is specially formulated for rosewood uh, and ebony fingerboards. I imagine stuff like purple heartwood and all the new woods they're using, power ferro and whatever. It's good for all those things, obviously not maple because maple is normally lacquered. And oil is not going to penetrate a lacquer. Uh, but anyway. This is specially formulated to treat, it just treats and nourishes the wood, stops it getting dry, stops it cracking. It also cleans and lubricates and it obviously I can get all the crap off. You know, all the finger gum, all the sweat that's built up, blah, 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 blah. And it's something I recommend you do at least once a year, maybe even every six months. It depends how much of a heavy play, uh, heavy play or. But look at that, you see that? And we're going to move to another part. So there's a lot of stuff you don't see happen off camera. You know when I'm working on a guitar, it's not just about me taking the strings off, polishing the frets, and changing a couple of screws, uh, tightening a couple of screws in, and then putting the strings back on. The, all this gets done on all the guitars that come in, every single one, unless it's a maple one. It'll just get a normal wipe with some naphtha, which naphtha is just going to bring up any grease or sweat, but it's not going to soak in or so much under the frets as they do on these, where they've got no protection or they've got no protective layer of lacquer or layers of lacquer. So this takes a while. I've already polished the frets. Uh, to polish the frets, I will go with a fret guard and just some steel wool. Fret guard, thin one, the fat one for that end, thin one for this end. You just place it over the frets and you can polish the fret. Well, you know how it works, you're not stupid. But anyway, this is where we are with this. And then a little bit of elbow grease. And yeah, so this is gonna come out really, really nice. So, end of the day, this is an 800 pound guitar and it's an American made one. So, why do they charge 1500 quid or whatever for the standards? Well, I'll tell you for why. You'll be using a better, a much better grade of rosewood on the fingerboard. For one, this is not top grade rosewood. It doesn't even have that nice a uh, pattern in it. We normally have a beautiful, beautiful pattern. You go with Brazilian rosewood. Wow, amazing. So, you're paying extra for that. Um, you will have a, a more solid neck and a more a better sculpted neck um it will be done probably built completely not completely by hand but mainly by hand this I, I imagine a lot of the stuff is automated on these builds you know it's not going to be a completely hand built guitar the bridges on these i don't like a six point tremolo it, it's this crap design really crap design i have one on my strap which i've heavily heavily modded and i'm thinking of Removing it and putting a two-point fulcrum tremolo on there or a floating tremolo Same thing. But anyway, there you go. That is all the frets and the fingerboard all cleaned up and this is That has just come off this guitar. All of that is off this fingerboard But anyway, I'll chuck that away. That's the wood nourish The fingerboard all cleaned. The frets are leveled and polished. Uh, I can remove all the tape From the pickups. I'll tape over the pickups to stop getting um, filings, you know, steel wool filings in the magnets, because the magnets are going to attract the filings, aren't they? So that keeps everything protected and clean. This is just Scotch 3M low tack masking tape. Great stuff, been using it for years. It's a tip I got from uh, Nigel Roberts out at Leicester Shaluthia, out in Thringston there. Great guy, what a great guy he is. Uh, he's been fantastic with me, I've learned so many things from him. He's even given me tools. What a great guy. 
and is one of these guys who is happy to share his knowledge, which is a fantastic thing. Yeah, doesn't cost anything, does it? Fantastic stuff. So there you go. Uh, we are now ready to put the strings back on, get the strings back on, I'll reset these pickups, and we'll get to work on the bridge and the nuts. We are now at the back end of setting up this guitar. I have set the neck how I want it set with a nice little bit of relief in there. We've got about 0.25 millimeters under the ninth fret. I've set the pickups. You don't really need to set these pickups high on the treble side because they're staggered. Uh, and by stagger, they mean they're more or less radius to the strings by the B string, which always tends to be a little bit louder for whatever reason. But they're staggered right anyway. So these pickups are now more or less level. Normally on the treble side, you lift them up a bit to get a bit more volume out of treble strings. I've not done that. Tiny little bit higher on the bridge pickup. I've set the saddles uh, to the perfect radius to match the radius of the fingerboard and what will be the radius of the nut very shortly. I've also set the intonation. Quite a few of these were, um, we've got a flat note on the 12 frets so we to lengthen, uh, shorten the gauge or shorten the string length. So I've moved a few of the saddles. So it's intonating perfectly. The, the neck is set right, we've got the radius, and what we need to do now is set the height correctly above the first fret. And um, I've got a, my, my rule is basically I'd like to go on a good setup, I've got the wrong feeler gauge, so I can get another feeler gauge, get a one. Without holding the strings down at the third fret or anything, what I like to do is I like to go, I like the gap from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string on the first string to be about 0.25 millimetres. For it on the sixth string of a base E, I like it to be about 0.4 millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure. I'm going to do it from the base side first. So I'll take a 0.4. I could go as low as 0.3 here, 0.2 there, but that's when people are a little bit pickier. And this is quite high. So the fourth string, or the D, as you know, as a D, I'd like to be about 0.3. It's buzzing on 0.4, so let's check it at 0.3. That's just about good enough. Same with the G string, that's good enough. We'll go 0.25 on the top two strings. And I'm going to get my arm in the way here. In fact, if I hold the feel gauge this way. Both of these are a little bit high, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fret slot files. There are three files, each with two different cuts on them, and these cut to a perfect semicircle. And for instance, the red one is for the first and fourth string. It's a 0 0.01 and a 0 0.026 string gauge. The middle one, uh, sorry, the blue one is for strings two and five, which is 0 0.013 and 0 0.036. And the gold one is for strings three and six, and that is a, zero, a 0 0.017, 0 0.046. So you probably ascertain now, it's for string gauge 1046. I use the same ones for a 942 set. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to remove, I'm not going to loosen the string, I'm just going to take the string out of a slot and I need to go just a little bit. I'm going to take the 10 side and I'm just going to carve into the knot and we're just going to deepen that slot just a little. We don't have to go gung-ho and what we're going to do is we're going to measure again. I'm going to keep measuring you can't see where you are because my arm gets in the way because I'm right-handed, but that's tough. That's appropriate. So again, and I'm cutting more or less horizontally with a slight gradient down towards the tuning peg. Only ever so slight. I want to keep it nice and even. Not too much pressure. I don't want to remove too much material because if I do that, I've got to replace a knot, and that would suck. Gauge. I'm going to do it cack handed so you can see. See, there you go, now you can see. You can still go a little bit more. Always very, very slight adjustments. I can tell how much I'm cutting by, how much dust has gone flatter. That's 
put it on this drink tray. And I think we'll be just about there with this. It's good enough. That's okay as it is. I'm happy with all of those. That's 0.25, I'd like to get uh, 0.25 on these two. Very slight adjustments either side of 0.25. 0.3 for these two. Basically 0.3, maybe a tad under. 0.3, maybe a tad over. These are just measurements I like to use. It means when we finger an F chord or an F sharp, we're not going to get a sharp note by pressing down too much. It means the string height above the first fret is going to be good. So let's go, let's find a 0.3 for the middle two strings. That's good. Good enough for me. So I'm happy that those top four strings are good. So I'm going to work on the A string and the E string. I'm going to go first with the A string or, or the fifth string. About 0.3, just a little bit over. 0.35 would be ideal. We're just going to pop that string over this side, loosen it just a little so it doesn't swing back. We're going to take 0.036 slots of file, and we're just going to remove a little bit of material. Good thing about this, it is a 1036 set of strings, so I'm going to slightly just angle each side, just flare open that hole just a little bit. So the string doesn't sit super snug because if it's too snug it may pinch. Just getting that buzz, that's perfect for me in this one. We can go quite a bit with this one, we're going to take the next file. 0.046 gauge and we're going to do the same we're going to remove just a little bit of material that's a nice tight fit in there so we need to just flare that open just a little bit each side just flare it open that slot just a little we can still go a little bit more Aiming for about 0.35 on this one. So 0.3. 0 0.4 should just give us a little buzz now. So I'll go with 0.4. Blah, blah, blah. That's perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just eyeball it, make sure we have got a nice gradient, which we have. That is beautiful. I'm really, really happy with that. So I'm going to tune the guitar in and that will be finished. It is all done. I've done all the necessary work. I will move the camera um, so I can get to a proper angle. I can come and show you the guitar all set up and ready to go back to its owner back very soon. And there we are boys and girls, the guitar is all finished. Uh, I've not put the back plate on yet, but the guitar is done. You will now see that the tremolo is sat flush to the body, like so. Um, but I did that by tightening these screws, I had to tighten them right up. You don't need, the tremolo should not be pulling up like that. I've also altered the screws on the tremolo. We nip the first two, the first and the last, one and six. We nip them close and turn them back a quarter of a turn. And all the other ones we just bring close and nip back off a turn. So the two holding are the two outside ones. The guitar is beautiful. I have set the action above the 12th fret. We'll put a little bit of relief in the neck. 0 0.2, 0 0.25 to 0.3 millimeters at the 9th fret I would give for a learning intermediate player. Uh, as you see, just recently saw, I have altered the string height above the 1st fret. I've set the radius on the saddles and I've uh, set the intonation, the pickups have all been set, I've set them virtually horizontal because these pickups are staggered anyway. 
Um, the guitar is a fantastic looking guitar, isn't it? It does benefit from what they call the um, grease bucket tone system. Uh, whatever that is, we know what it is. Um, also, very nice pickup. You've got two Tex Mex, I believe, Tex Mex pickups, single coils here, and, and a Fender Atomic humbucker. Sounds fantastic. The guitar is set up really, really well. The electrics are fine. Uh, there is a little bit of ribbing down the side of the fingerboard here at the top that I mentioned earlier. If I scratch, you can hear. It's like scratching your finger across, a, across comb teeth. Uh, did mention that earlier, but a very, very nice guitar. Sub £800 to buy brand new. If this was used, I would imagine you'd get this for no more than, I want to expect it any more than £500 to buy one of these used. Is it worth £500? Well, I paid £300 for my Mexican, but then again, my Mexican, I spent £400 on it and I've given it a £250 refret. So my Mexican now is bringing me up towards near, uh, nearer to a thousand pounds when all said and done, but it, at least my Mexican Stratocaster is the best Mexican Stratocaster you are ever going to hear or play. This is a very, very nice guitar. Really, really like it. If I was buying an American Strat, I would want a large headstock one. I probably want a deluxe though, or at least a standard. I would either like it in all black like this with a rosewood fingerboard, maybe even ebony, or I would like it in all white with a maple fingerboard. That would be my choice, but this has been a beautiful guitar. It will be going back to its owner. I'm gonna plug it in and have a little go on it shortly. Once I've got the back plate on there, I'll put that back on. That's I'll put it that back on right now while I am talking to you. So back plate going on. So I've recapped and explained what I've done to the guitar. A very, very nice guitar. There's not a lot more to be said. So what I'll do is why I'm putting these screws back in, I will let you know about my website. Uh, uh, the best place to find out any information about me is at facebook.com forward slash NG17. People sometimes ask why the NG17 What's that about. NG17 is the start of my postcode, Nottingham 17. There you go, 17 being a favourite number of mine, as it represents Christ Victory on the Cross at Calvary. But maybe a lot of people, maybe a lot of you do not know that, but that is it. Anyway, back plate is going on. My name is Victor Christian. I'm your fret friend. Check me out at facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. Uh, just give me a second to get these screws in. Three more to do. Rumty tumty tum. If there was one complaint I have on this guitar, it is that the back plate here doesn't line up. There's a slot in the back for putting the strings in without taking the back plate off, and it does not line up with the tremolo, um, which is really, really odd because it ought to do. So, I'll show you there. It doesn't quite line up, does it? Look. But anyway, that side. Beautiful, beautiful guitar, all ready to go back to its owner. My name is Victor Christian. I'm your fret friend. Check out my Facebook, facebook.com forward slash ng17. Project finished, ready to go back to its owner. So until next time, boys and girls, God bless. Be good to each other, and I'll see you soon.